my colleagues will have a uh, field day with that. And with that, let me start up. And today's a very special day in that you don't have to listen to me. And no ch if anybody cheers, I'm going to be real pissed, okay? So, so far, so good. Hey, 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 I heard that. I heard that. Now, what we will do today is something I think is really, really useful for you guys. I'm turning a class over to Mr. Rojo here, who will talk to you guys about studying abroad. And as I mentioned in my email, I really, really, really don't like to give my class over for just anything, just anybody. But for Mr. Rojo, I think it's worth it. So, Joe, take Thank over. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good time. That's all yours. See you, mic on. That good? You good. Excellent. Well, good morning. Uh, Dr. Rush is always very kind uh, to give us a forum in which to talk to his class about internationalization and study abroad. How many of you are freshmen? Oh, wow. Uh, welcome to the University of Florida. Uh, this is the third week of classes. I hope you're having a great time. I hope you are um, very, um, you know, your, 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 your um, decision to come to the University of Florida was a good one and that uh, you're happy with your decision. It's a great school and we're here to make it even better. Okay, my name is Joe Rojo and I work just down the hall in Bryan 133. So if today um, I inspire you to make a, a commitment to study abroad, all you have to do is make an appointment and come down to my office. Um, we um, head the international programs and the, at the Heavener School of Business. And how many of you are business students? Large majority of you. Well, this, this talk today is, is good for every major because every major at UF can study abroad. Um, and my office doesn't just assist uh, University of Florida students, we assist uh, I mean, uh, any uh, business majors, we assist any major who comes to, 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 to talk to us. Uh, as a matter of fact, one third of the students we see are, are not business majors. Now, you say, oh, but I'm, I'm pre-med or I'm an engineer, I can't study abroad. Well, I have lots of data to show that it can be done because I've, I've assisted those students to study abroad. So. Um, I hope today that um, your curio curiosity is sparked by this um, opportunity available to you. And I hope that you begin the planning because as one guest uh, student that I brought with me today will, will attest to, study abroad is not something that you do lightly. It takes planning. You gotta think about it. You gotta um, do a lot of budgeting. You gotta do a lot of academic planning and then you go and, 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 and you have an adventure. I will say one of the nice things about my job is that I don't have any clients that are unhappy they studied abroad. Isn't that great when you sell a product and 100% of your customers are satisfied? I've never met a student who said, that was a bummer. I hated it in Paris. Or gosh, Taipei was just dull. I hate it. No. Everyone comes back re-energized, saying, gosh, that really added to my life. Um, many of them say that was the best semester I had at the University of Florida as a student. And um, so that makes my job really wonderful, okay? Now, before we move on, I want you to um, take note of these um, events that are happening. Now, if you're free tonight, okay, we have something called the Global Gathering. There are 65 students from 18 different countries studying at the Warrington College of Business this semester. Okay, so we've invited them to this party, all right? And we've also invited UF students. And their mission tonight is to pitch their university to you. Come to Maastricht. Come to uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Okay, this is not only a great way to learn about uh, study abroad opportunities, but you get to meet these folks who might be your friends and guides when you make the, the leap and you go abroad, all right? So it's a lot of fun, um, join us. 
But you have to RSVP though because um, we are ordering food. Um, so if you just go to uh, Facebook, the Global Gathering, there's an event that you can uh, RSVP for. We're going to have general information about our programs throughout the semester. The first one's happening September 12th. So um, if, you, if, if today you say, oh, that Joe Rojo, that, that, that made sense. I think I might do that. We'll come to one of the information sessions or make an appointment. The other thing is September 26th, we have the study abroad fair. It happens at the Rights Union, and it's a big event. This is where you go, go to talk to people like me from other colleges and also uh, third party providers. So make a point to go to the Rights Union as you're getting your lunch and talk about study abroad. All right, is anybody planning to study abroad spring? Believe it or not, my office sent seven freshmen abroad this semester. Uh, their first semester of college will be spent abroad. Um, it's, it's a new concept, but I think students are coming um, to the realization that internationalization is just part of the college experience. So that's, that's very exciting, and we're, we, you know, we're Skyping them, making sure that everything's okay, and um, they're having a, a good time so far. So, also become a, face, uh, a f um, friend of Facebook. We post a lot of good information about internationalization on our page um, and, and articles about the college as well. I hope we hit 400 likes by the end of the week. I think it can be done. We're at 330, 350, something like that. We can do it. All right, here's our mission. How many people think study abroad is like vacationing abroad? Wow, okay. <laughs> Gentlemen. Uh, you know, the, the study abroad has this idea of, you know, oh, I'm going to go to Florence and I'm going to take something like uh, pasta and wine and I'm just going to, for six weeks, I'm going to be, you know, a total tourist, uh, just travel all over the place. Yes, I'll go to class, but that's incidental. All right? That is not my concept of study abroad. Okay? My concept of study abroad uh, requires that you take um, challenges onto yourself, that you go there with goals. It might be uh, a goal to learn a language, or it might be a goal to take some uh, really serious co coursework that helps you be more marketable when you get a job. But the idea is that studying abroad is going to change you as a person and as a student and make you a better all-around human being. That's a tall order, isn't it? But we, that's what we try to do. All right. The other thing I hear often is, I can't study abroad. Study abroad is very expensive. Okay? And my guest today uh, will prove that that is not so. Yes, there are some study abroad programs that are very expensive that might cost fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year. Uh, I mean a semester. But then there are other programs that would actually cost less than you staying one semester in Gainesville. No, really, I'm, I'm serious. How many of you are from Gainesville? One gentleman over there. Uh, the rest of you are studying abroad in Gainesville, right? Because you're incurring charges for an apartment and transportation and stuff that you could have probably avoided if you had just stayed in your city of origin and just gone to school there, all right? So that's, that's a concept that I always bring up because studying abroad is basically just moving, just like you did to come to UF, but to a farther distance. All right, are we all in agreement that this is a global economy? Yeah? We all know that our clothes are not made here, our shoes are not made here, our computers are not made here. They're made somewhere else. Maybe the components travel from Malaysia, uh, to China, and then from China, maybe somewhere in the United States, where they're you know, packaged and then sold to you. Business is global, life is global, and whether we like it or not, that's just the way it's going to be. It's not changing. Uh, one in six jobs uh, requires international components. Okay? That's just a fact of the marketplace. Um, so I think as part of your college education, 
that should start you thinking about, okay, what is my role? What am I going to do to ensure that when I graduate and I join the, 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 the workforce, that I bring those skills that might be required by the companies, the employers that are going to be hiring you. Okay, how many of you are learning a foreign language? Great. Uh, I would love to see more of you um, raise your hands. I would say maybe one third maybe did. Um, learning a foreign language is critical for uh, giving you opportunities in the international marketplace. And it doesn't matter what language it is. Um, I know that now it would seem like Chinese would be the language, but no, just go with whatever language you like. I guarantee you that it will open doors for you. So I know it's hard. There are five credits, usually the starting classes, but it's, it's well worth your time to begin that process. Also, when you study abroad, putting that language into use will be so, so um, pleasurable. Uh, it, it will really bring it all home. All right. Now, a lot of you are here at UF, and you might be sitting next to a future CEO. You're all going to do wonderful things when you leave this place, right? So you have joined the UF network, right? You all know about the Gator Nation. It's a great slogan, and it's true. Um, when you study abroad, all of a sudden, you go to another institution, and guess what? Your network becomes even bigger. And John, this is something that you might want to talk about when, when you come up here. Um, the more people you know, the better the opportunities in your life. So why not get to know people who live in other countries and are also studying at, at university? Because they might be very useful for you as you launch a business or as you look for employment. The bottom line is students tell us that when they go and interview for a job, study abroad is noticed. All right? It becomes one of the key uh, topics of that interview. Why? Well, many things happen when you study abroad. You develop, I think I lost the slide, you develop um, a much um, harder shell. You can resolve problems. You are able to uh, interact with people. You are more receptive to different cultures. And overall, you have more security in doing things on your own. It definitely uh, creates a lot of independence and a lot of feeling of self-reliance. Now, I think one thing that might overwhelm you when you start looking at your study abroad opportunities is all of the places that you can go to. Okay? So when I talk to students, um, I have to explain that there are sponsored programs, like the ones in the college. You see the posters back there? Those are our programs. We also have exchanges. These are reciprocal agreements that we've made with universities all over the world. There are also a lot of US sponsored programs that take, take place in the summer. So if you say, oh, I don't want to go for an entire semester, my schedule just doesn't allow it, there are also shorter programs that you can do in the summer. And finally, if somebody comes and says, I want to go to Mumbai, and I look at our portfolio and I don't see that we have a place in Mumbai, then what I would say is let, let's look at other providers, at other universities that can make this happen for you. So the world's your oyster. I can send you almost anywhere as long as there is no uh, State Department uh, warning against travel there. Um, just think big, okay? You can make it happen. These are questions you should be asking yourself. Obviously, the first one is the fun one, right? Because the first one will determine what happens to the others. Where do you want to go? And when you're there, what do you want to do? Okay. And what is your budget? Can you afford it? Okay. And then the, the last one is very, very important. How much assistance do you require? Are you a person that is very independent and can figure things out on their own? Or do you need a lot of people to guide you? And do you need a support team to help you make it happen? Because programs come in all, say, uh, all sizes and shapes. 
All right? So these are very serious questions. And when you meet with an advisor, that's exactly what we go through, step by step. All right. Um, these are the four college-sponsored programs, and they work for almost every major at this university. Um, why are we in these cities? Um, they're nice cities. Uh, um, historically, for the last 50 years or so, American students, not just UF students, but American students have always gone to these four locations. The UK, Italy, Spain, and France. Sometimes Italy and Spain change place, second, third. But normally, this is where American students like to go. So we decided, let's go there. And, but let's go to the capitals. Because most Gators want to be in big cities. And let's do it so these types of courses, like the ones that you're enrolled in now, EP, let's offer those. Because then that way, students can plan ahead. They can say, OK. In spring 2014, I'm going to go to Madrid, and I'm going to take marketing, and I'm going to take business law, so I don't follow, you know, I don't, I don't, um, I, I keep up with my degree um, requirements. Um, but then I also know the product. I know that Dr. Lutz will be teaching it, and I know what the UF model is like. So what we did is we kept the business content UF, and then we added a lot of additional content that generates in those cities. So Spanish language courses, European business, history, art appreciation, humanities, social sciences, all of those are tacked on and taught live by instructors in these locations. A lot of people say, is that, is, is that it? You don't go anywhere else? And then I always have this slide. And I say, nope, we go to other places too. OK, and this is a running joke in my office. I've never sent a kid to Finland. Uh, the Gators don't like snow. Um, I, I mean, we send graduate students there, but I have never, ever sent an undergraduate. Maybe, maybe this year, one of you will go. <laughs> All right, so it's dark, right, if you go in the winter. And there's ice and snow. But you know, we're bringing you back. It's not like we're leaving you there. <laughs> um, so try it. You, you might like all those uh, winter sports. You might like herring and salmon and all that good stuff. No, really, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, Helsinki is a great place. So um, think about it, OK? Because um, it, it'll really open your eyes, and it'll change your whole perspective about what this world is like. All right, so I'm an old guy. You know, why should you believe me? Um, I, I always say, you know, if, if I'm going to pitch this idea, I really need to bring students on board who, who have done the experience. Um, I've, I've met John when he was a freshman. Yeah. This is John Bryan, by the way. And uh, John uh, went to uh, Taiwan. And uh, what I wanted to do is have him tell you a little bit about his experience, the fun, the hard work, the adventure. And, and then we'll open it up for questions, OK? So, so, so you can ask us about how we put this study abroad thing together. All right, so without further ado, John Bryan. Thank you, Joe. Uh, hi, everyone. Is your mic on, John? What? John, turn your mic on. You should be getting a little red light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. When we have our new building, this will be fixed. Right, Anthony? Built in what? Place. All right. Thank you, dear director. I always wanted to say that. So I'm a general studies major at the uh, Warrington College, and that means that my specialization is international studies. So I'm the closest thing that we have as undergrads to international business. And as Joe mentioned, I was in his first year Florida or Warrington welcome class many, many years ago, it seems like. Uh, and I had four years ago now, right? 
Um, but I did my exchange in the spring in Taiwan and Taipei, and then I stayed after my exchange program for two months to intern at the U.S. Department of Commerce. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. All right. So these are the courses I took: uh, international business negotiation, uh, multiculturalism, new media in East Asia. Uh, my professor in that class was really, really cool. Uh, he had actually taught at Stanford when Google was founded. And then he taught at Harvard when Zuckerberg worked in the library at tech support. So uh, he was all over the place. That was very cool. I had Chinese class, a global leadership class, and management. And of those courses, three of those counted back towards my major. And that's probably one of your big three concerns about studying abroad. One, how much is it going to cost? How am I going to make that work financially? Two, am I going to fall behind? And this is especially true if you're an engineer because you have a very rigid progression. And then third, how am I going to sublease my apartment and where am I going to live? Because that, that makes it challenging. Everything in Gainesville is a one-year lease, right? Uh, next slide. I'll get it. All right. So this is the cost comparison that we have on the website of how much it costs to study in Gainesville and study in Taiwan. And my costs were actually fairly similar to this. I was fortunate enough to get some scholarship from the University of Florida to study abroad specifically. So my scholarship covered my flight. Um, and then once I was there, my living costs were lower. Food was really cheap. I could get lunch, like dumplings and uh, like milk tea, like $2. So I ate out pretty much every meal, except for maybe breakfast once in a while, for like six months. So I was pretty lazy when I got back to Gainesville. Uh, start making John, let stuff. me ask you, um, what arrangement did you make to ensure that you were not paying rent in Gainesville? And Planning. Planning. OK. Um, this is always the most challenging part, specifically to do a semester abroad, because if you do a summer abroad, subleasing in Gainesville in the summer is not very difficult. So what I did before I was going abroad is I was looking for someone that was subleasing. And fortunately, a friend of mine got an internship with Disney over in Orlando, so he was going to be gone in the fall, and I was going to be gone in the spring. Uh, so I just sublet in the fall from him when he was over in Orlando. Um, but everyone knows somebody that's you know overseas, any of them the fall or the spring. And if you need further help, the International Studies Office can connect you with people because if someone goes abroad in the spring, obviously they're going to need a sublease when they're in Gainesville. So that's, it sounds challenging, but if you want to go, that's, you can definitely make That's it. one of the biggest um, issues that I hear. Um, I cannot go and study abroad because um, I've, leased, uh, I, I've leased an apartment. And again, this is, if, if you do the right planning, uh, you can ensure that somebody will take over that lease. And it's even easier if you live on campus, right? Oh, if, it's, if you're living on campus, we can just write a letter saying um, this person is going on a study abroad program um, and, and they, they basically allow you to break the lease um, because there are so many students who want to live on campus and we don't have housing for everybody. So that's the easiest way to get you, you know, out of a lease if you live on campus. All right, so we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so this is where I lived. Um, when I went to the Global Gathering previously, before I left, I was talking to students that studied at Chungchi before uh, as grad students, and they gave sterling reviews, except they said the housing wasn't so great. Uh, except when I got there, they had finished the new international students' housing complex, uh, which was actually operated by a hotel company, the International House. Uh, and everyone in my building, it was kind of like Epcot on each floor, because we had people from France, Sweden, uh, U.S., Germany, Serbia, you name it. Um, and that was very, very cool uh, because as an exchange student, you're not only in a group with all the local students and you get to meet the people in your local country, we also get to meet people from countries all over the place. And this is especially true uh, in Europe because people study all over the place in Europe. So you'll run the students from not just your target country where you're living in, but from everywhere else. Okay, so this is just some of the stuff that I did. Uh, so Taiwan is an island that only has 23 million people, uh, but there's certainly a lot to do, and I enjoyed the climate. I think I went through 11 umbrellas over the course of my time, between typhoons and losing them and everything. Um, but there's, that's me at a tea house at the top, uh, and then we went down to the south of the island one of the first weeks. Uh, so there's like big spring break destination called Kunding, so that's the hostel there. Uh, and the cool part about studying abroad is it not only sets you up to study within your target country, but also to study uh, in areas very close to wherever your target country is. So for spring break, we went to uh, Singapore and Malaysia. And 
the fellow I'm with in that photo on the right, uh, actually exchanged at UF from Singapore. So when I was in Singapore, I was able to go back and follow up on you know, the guy I know that lives in Singapore, and he was able to take us around and give us a behind the scenes tour. He works for the Ministry of Defense now, so that was very cool. Um, so if you know exchange students here, you can follow up uh, when you're there. Then we went to Malaysia too, uh, so there were some monkeys that, that harass people, and that's kind of fun to watch. Um, but this, anywhere you go to study abroad, your spring break and your vacation opportunities are going to be very, very, very different from what you can do here. Uh, as far as how much it costs to get somewhere else. So if you're in Europe, it's a piece of cake to go on spring break in like Croatia because it's just a train ride. Um, or mine, I just took a budget airline that was far less expensive even than flying from like here to Atlanta. Um, so your vacation opportunities and your leisure time, uh, especially in Asia, you can stretch your dollar. Keep going. Okay, oh, that's a funny picture, man. Um, so. You look one pretty of, dapper there with the suit on. One of the main concerns that students have when they go overseas is I'm going to have to fall behind in my student activities. I'm going to have to fall behind in pretty much you know, one semester of just being at Florida. Uh, and to some extent, for student organizations, you might have to make that sacrifice. Um, but I would argue that the benefits far outweigh the cost because any employer, if they see a gap on your resume because you weren't a vice president of an organization because you weren't here, they see that you've lived in an entirely different environment. As Joe mentioned, like over 12% of all jobs have to do with something international, and that's only going to go up. So you know, if, you can, if you can work in Tanzania, you can definitely work in Cleveland, right? So when I was in Taiwan, I had the opportunity to participate in their Model UN competition there because I do Model UN here at Florida. Uh, and I got to represent China. So there's, I was actually one of the outstanding delegates. That was a very, very fun competition. Um, so if you're involved in any international organizations, there's a good chance that there might be a chapter or a relevant organization similar at your uh, host school. Okay, um, so I've already talked about the planning. Uh, the planning for me was even more tricky because as a business student, your junior summer is critical to do an internship. And when I was going back and looking at where I wanted to go, I had three choices really that I rounded it down to. I wanted to go to either Singapore, Taipei uh, or Hong Kong. And I really want to go to Taiwan because as a Chinese minor, that gives me an opportunity to use my Chinese outside of class uh, and in some of my classes. But in Chi like greater China, Taiwan and China, they start school later because of Chinese New Year. They don't break for Christmas. So I would have to start. I didn't start class until February, um, which means I couldn't come back to the United States and intern, which is going to be tricky. So I had to find some way to intern in Taiwan. I really wanted to intern in Taiwan if I could. Uh, so I looked into working for the American Institute, which is our embassy because of diplomatic relations. So if you go to the US embassy webpage, there will be a little asterisk at the bottom. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to work with the Department of Commerce office. So I did import export. Uh, we do commercial diplomacy. There's my Chinese name business card. And then on the left, that was the uh, 4th of July embassy party, which was pretty cool. Um, but if you're overseas already, and I think the London program already includes an internship prepackaged, so they'll, they'll help place you. Um, it's very easy to, once you're there, set up an internship, or it's easier to set up. Well, I, I think also the language factor comes into play. You know, if, if you can't speak any bit of French, finding work in France will be very difficult. Um, so. John already started the foundation. I think he was learning Chinese your first year mm -hmm. here. At, so he is quite um, skilled um, at uh, you know, working in that environment. So again, think about that. If you want international positions, begin learning a language. It could be Portuguese, it could be Spanish, it could be Chinese. Right. Um, and as far as foreign languages are concerned, I started taking Chinese when I got to UF. But even so, your biggest advantage as an American abroad is the fact that you know the United States market. Uh, so if you're looking for internships, if you narrow your search to American government offices, American businesses, you'll be more competitive there than working for uh, you know, a local company. Because my English is better than the local people in Taiwan, but their Chinese is definitely better than mine. So if I was to get a job you know, or an internship with like uh, Asus Computer, Acer, HTC as an intern, that would be much more difficult to do. Uh, the next slide there. Okay, uh, so that covers, I guess, the, the general uh, gist of what I was up to and what I did. Um, but I just want to come back and hit three key points as far as what most people's concerns are, and that's housing, falling behind a UF either in your coursework or in your activities, um, 
and then what are you going to do once you're there? And most programs, if you do some of them, you'll go abroad with other Americans, which is great if you haven't been abroad before. Um, two years ago, I went abroad for the summer uh, just to study Chinese with a bunch of Americans. And as someone that had never been overseas for any extended period of time, uh, that was a really good way to kind of break into it. But after that, I wanted a more authentic experience where I, I didn't really have that American bubble all the time um, that I could lean back on, and I wanted to do an exchange. So there's something for everyone depending on what you want to do. I think we have a program that goes to Antarctica. Yes, at UF. Yeah, yeah so definitely. you can go down there and do like a, you take like an online class about penguins or something. Uh, there's thousands of options. Uh, so there's pretty much something for everybody unless you want to go to North Korea. I, I can't help you there. Um, yeah, North Korea, Iraq, those are out of the... Those are usually one-way right exchanges. Here. You don't come back. Um, <laughs> but if you're interested in doing any of the exchange programs, what I would encourage you to do to help your planning process is go visit the UF uh, Warrington webpage and go under International uh, Study Abroad or International Studies, uh, and then you can go under what they have, a list of course equivalencies, meaning that if you don't want to do one of those four programs you're interested in going to Thailand or one of the places we have an exchange program, you can see what classes at those institutions are already in the system is counting for UF coursework. And those are good for, I think, like five years. So you can kind of like plan around that. Also, if you're, if you're planning on studying something and you think the classes count, you can submit forms in advance. One of the classes I got credit for wasn't in the system until someone submitted it. Uh, and she's actually in Taiwan now. Um, and what's cool is when you do any of these exchange programs, it's a two-way exchange, right? We send people abroad, and then they send students here. So I actually met a friend, uh, his English name is Charles, in Taiwan when I was there. And I was kind of briefing him on how Gainesville was going to work and how he's going to get here, where he should live, uh, all that kind of thing. And Charles is here. My first day back, I was in the international student's office, and there, there he is, just walks in the door. Uh, so that's very cool to have that kind of network, uh, especially if you're interested in doing anything focused on a region, because then you know people on, on both sides. So I think I'll just open the floor up to questions at this point. But, uh, what are your, what are your um, concerns, your fears, your um, thoughts? Yes, sir. All right, the, the question the gentleman asked is what are some of the requirements? What are some of the things you need to prepare before you go abroad? And mostly academic, right? Um, it depends on the institution. Like I said, uh, um, we have seven freshmen uh, abroad. They're in London, Rome, and, and uh, Madrid. Um, I would say if you're going to the program in, in uh, Taiwan, you'd probably need a good business foundation. Um, but again, there are programs for every kind of uh, expectation. I think the most important thing to establish is when do you want to go, where do you want to go, and what's available where you're going. Um, again, some of our exchange programs, I would say they're better for someone who is more advanced in their business studies. Just to build off what Joe said, uh, if I went to Taiwan two years ago, I wouldn't have taken any of my pre-tracking courses. Uh, so I wouldn't have been able to leverage everything that they cover in you know, CGS and everything else in my other classes. But at the same time, if you look at the equivalencies, we have equivalencies for pretty much everything under the sun for every major. Um, so you just kind of have to find something that meets your needs specifically. Yes? All right, the question is, do you take courses online when you study abroad? Um, only in the, for the College of Business, only in the four programs that I talked about earlier, uh, Madrid, London, Paris, and Rome. Those have a foundation of online courses. When John went to Taiwan, he just took courses at that institution. Mm -hmm. um, it depends, again, on, on the location. And it's whatever is more comfortable for you. I think you took up very upper level type courses, yeah. um, and um, I think he was ready for it. Uh, yes. Um, how many engineering majors have came to you for study abroad, and what was the comments regarding on staying on track for their courses? Okay. Um, for example, um, one thing that I want you to do is um, if you go to our website, the address is right there, um, we have a group of students called the uh, International Programs Ambassadors, all right? And there's a gentleman named Nigel. 
who's an ambassador for the college, and he's an engineer. Um, now, it depends what Nigel was doing. He was doing a business minor. So he went on our programs and completed the requirements for the business minor. Also, if you're industrial, uh, industrial In, engineering, it's easier to do. Industrial engineering so requires a lot of business uh, courses. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, I, I, don't, I guess we don't have a slide for it. Uh, your social life outside of class, because you're not usually involved in as many things, as many activities, uh, when you're overseas, uh, is very, very, very exciting. Uh, I can say with total confidence that the nightlife in Taipei exceeds that of Gainesville. Um, because you don't have you know, the, the vault in, in Taiwan or anything like that. <laughs> so uh, that's something to bear in mind. And that also allows you to, especially from a business point of view, uh, the network. You can build your network with people you know up from all over the place. And you get to really see how different people uh, di socialize in different situations. And you get a good cultural feel. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, that was something I guess uh, we didn't cover directly. But if you are studying abroad in, correct me if I'm wrong, the fall or the spring, as an exchange student, the, the way it works as an exchange On is any program? For Bright Futures? For Bright Futures. OK, so any program your Bright Futures, if it's in the spring or the fall, uh, when Bright Futures normally apply, it will be applied to that program. So my tuition uh, in Taiwan was the same as if I take an equivalent course load here in Gainesville. Um, so that makes it very, very cost effective. So I you think. can use Bright Futures, Florida prepaid. Um, you can apply for a, a, a lot of scholarships. Mm -hmm. the, the College of Business has scholarships for its programs. The International Center has scholarships. <coughs> there is a, a scholarship that was just announced called the Boren for Asian countries. There's the Gilman. Uh, I mean, again, if you do the, the work, uh, the money will. I think we'll if you go up. to Thailand, it's actually like cheaper than Gainesville, like vastly cheaper. Oh, definitely, yes. yeah. Um, if you're getting residency here in Florida, does that like, put a, like, a halt to it? No, because you're still a UF student. Yeah, so your computer, actually, you'll get a VPN from the National Center. Uh, and your computer is convinced the entire time you're in Taiwan, or wherever you are, in my case, Taiwan, that you're still at UF. So I would be overseas, and I could watch the Olympics from a, UF, like a US network. I could watch all the TV shows that I missed if I did. You don't want to keep up with that. So you, now more than ever, you don't feel as removed from everything uh, when you're overseas. You know, even 10 years ago, it would have just been like phone calls and like calling cards and everything. But now, because I was a 12-hour time change away, so in Taiwan right now it is 9:07 p.m. Uh, I would wake up every morning and I would just get all my Facebook updates in one shot because everyone else is asleep. Um, <laughs> so it's easy to keep up with everyone, especially now. How how many people would not go? and study abroad during a football season? Ah, not, as, not as many. Oh, <laughs> I went in the spring. Uh, but uh, Taiwan also has a, the academic calendar is weird in the fall for them. So. Our, our Gators in London watch the game with a London club. Oh, that's true. I didn't mention UF that. The UF London I, club. I was up at 4 in the morning watching us lose at the last minute to Louisville uh, in the Elite Eight. So you can definitely keep up with sports overseas, although it can be a little bit more challenging. Yes, you had a question. Joke? The question is, uh, is it harder for an international student to, to, to study abroad? The, the response to that is no. You just get a visa just like an American student would, and then you, you're allowed to, uh, to go there. At, at UF, we have, we have a huge uh, Hispanic population. So we have students from Peru and Venezuela, and um, they just get a visa, and off they go, just like the other American students. Not a problem. Anything Any else? Any, any, um, any places that we haven't covered that you would like to study abroad? Is, are they? In Greece, um, there are summer programs available in, in Greece, but I don't have an exchange. And I don't think the university has an exchange program right now. There, isn't there something in Athens? Is there a UF in Athens there's program? A, there's a short, and I think it runs from the College of Journalism. I think they yeah. did, this summer, they went to Barcelona and they went to Athens. But again, we can look elsewhere. It doesn't have to be a UF program. Yes, sir? Is London the only city in England that UF goes to? Is London the only city in England that UF goes to? 
No, we go to Birmingham, we go to Manchester, Manchester yep. we go to Lancaster, we go to Nottingham. Yeah, the College of Business has three programs in the UK. And some of those are exchanges. So you'll actually just still pay your U of tuition to go and you'll be surrounded mainly by British students. So that's cool. Any other questions? Yes. Well, well, the, oh, what a great segue. Look at this. Now, those, those nice, friendly people, uh, I would say, you know, when I, get, when I come to work every day, I, I really like my job. It's, it's, um, it's something that I look forward to. And, and I, like, I genuinely like working with students. And guess what? Those people uh, who work with me, they love students as well. Um, so yeah, you just go and uh, either stop in person to the office or you call that number and you make an appointment. Okay. Is anyone scared of studying abroad? I know that movie Taken, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's a sequel, I just read, there's a sequel coming for, for Christmas. And I think this time the whole family is kidnapped. Uh, <laughs> Guys, I think one of the biggest things that study abroad does is it makes you realize that the world is not scary like they make us believe. Oh, I didn't mention that. Uh, so when I was in Taiwan, I would be routinely like walking through like back alleys at like two in the morning and have absolutely no concern for my safety. Not, not because I'm totally reckless, uh, but because that's just not a dangerous thing. Um, so, you know, there, there's... It's, it's a good world. Most people are very good in it. Um, we all want the same things, and I think, um, I think m for many of your parents, um, you know, if you say, Mom, Dad, I, I want to go to, you know, Taipei, they'll say, but kid, you're crazy. Don't, yeah, they, don't go. You can't go. Um, and, and I think a lot of it is just the, um, the really wide-held belief that we are safest here in the United States and the rest of the world is you know, very scary. It, it isn't, guys. It's, and then that's one of the nicest things about studying abroad, is you realize how much fun the world is. All right. It was a treat. Uh, I know the room was pretty warm today, wasn't it? Um, so, and it's 8.30, it's rough. But uh, you were a wonderful audience, and if we can get you abroad, we'll be happy. Thank, Thank you. you.